Hello everyone, welcome to Telugu One Academy. Friends, today in the Northeast Insurgency, we will be talking about the state of Assam. So, state of Assam, most of the part of insurgency is related with uh, the influx of Bangladeshi issue or uh, change in demography. And there is also uh, various demands for statehood within the Assam. Okay, they wanted a statehood as in the case of Meghalaya, where we have separated Meghalaya and formed the state of Meghalaya for Gairoja, Kashi and Jaintia people. Even there are more demands in the state of Assam to form a separate state. They, those include like uh, areas of Bodo land issue or uh, whatever you want to say, Daima, Daima Raj issue. Okay, all these issues also we will be discussing in this chapter. I would like to look, I would like you people to look into the map of uh, Assam. When you look at the map of Assam, it has, it is bordered with Arunachal Pradesh, almost every northeast state. Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Tripura, Mizoram, Manipur, Nagaland. It is also having border with Bhutan in the north, here you can see. Okay, it is also having border with West Bengal through the Siliguri corridor or the chicken neck. This is the smaller part of West Bengal, okay. With West Bengal also Assam has a bit of uh, other issues, I will also discuss about them. Hope you have uh, understood you, uh, all the borders which uh, Assam has. The inter when it compared to the international boundary, uh, it has boundary with Bangladesh, Bhutan, okay. These are the only two international boundaries which uh, the Assam has. It has no border with Myanmar or no border with uh, China. Now coming back, uh, Assam was the first state which was created soon after the independence of India in the northeast. Okay, the radical turn in Assam nationalism came to be traced back to the what you say when East Pakistan was formed. Lot number of uh, other people or non-tribal people have been influxed into the Assam. Okay, influx illegal migrants from East Pakistan after, even after partition of 1947 and even after the Bangladesh Liberation War, large number of non-tribal people or plain people have been coming into the Assam who have changed the demography of Assam to make it a non-tribal state. So, massive migrant flow has created immense anxiety among the Assamese, middle class and rural masses and violent protests have erupted in this region. So what happened, the Assamese thought that India is exploiting Assam's oil, we have Assam oil extraction there. Revenues from Assam and other famous products like tea were also going to head offices located in the West Bengal. Most proximate cause of Assam agitation, the major cause of agitation was uh, the mall practices which were happened in the ele election process in 1978. What happened, the people thought that the election or electoral mall practices were happened only because more number of non-Indians or non-Assamese or they call them, them as Bangla, Bengalis have come into Assam and made them register as citizens and also made them register into the electoral roles and they have been dominating the whole issue. So then what happened, then they raised a banner or fight through the All Assam Students Union, let the agitation demanding the promise which was stated in the 1951 when there was first, first clashes saying that the government of India will be making National Register of Citizens for Assam, NRC. Regarding NRC, my friends, I will discuss this in separate topic, okay, in miscellaneous topics where I will be discussing more and more topics. NRC is nothing but a registry of citizens which has their names, okay. They, they are only really considered as a citizens. Next, uh, even in the register of citizens to be utilized to determine the citizenship of all those living in Assam. Whoever name is not present in this National Register of Citizens, they will be sent to the Foreigners Tribunal, which will declare them as foreigners or not. Okay. Next, the first insurgent group which was formed in Assam. So, Assam has a large number of other insurgent groups. The most important insurgent group is nothing but United Liberation Front of Assam or Assam. You Ulfa, it is also called simply Creation of one of the most persistent of violent ethnic movements in Assam, the United Liberation Form 
front of Assam was created in the year 1979 at Shivsagar. Okay, if you have studied last year budget, the government of India said they'll, they are going to form a museum at Shivasagar, a site of historical significance since the time of Ahom. So, what is the aim of this Ulfa group or United Liberation Front of Assam? They want uh, the old age Ahom kingdom of Assam and they want an independent sovereign Assam from outside Union of India. Ulfa wants Assam status to Ahom ruled Assam pre-1826, Treaty of Yandubu, okay, pre-1826 or before Treaty of Yandubu between British and Burmese which brought in the British rule in Assam. Recruits of Ulfa were drawn from the Assam Jaintia Jaitiyabad Parishad and from uh, Swadin Assom, that is independent Assom. So, number of people have joined the Ulfa group or Ulfa faction and they have been using arms uh, and all other uh, extremes uh, to do cause violence in the region. So, on 3rd September 2001, there was start 2011, a peace talk was formed uh, and a tripartite agreement uh, was happening for suspension of operations against Ulfa. That was signed between government of India, government of Assam and Ulfa in July 2012. Violence broke out with riots between the indigenous Bodos and Bengali speaking Muslims who were suspected to be illegal Bangladeshis even after that time. So what happened? Even Assam has a large number of Muslim population around 10% of Muslim are pop, uh, population are Muslims in that region. They thought these Bangladeshis have come in and they are disturbing the whole uh, uh, tribal, uh, non-tribal uh, demography in the region. So violence in Assam later had repercussions in other parts of India because you see Muslims were attacked. So even in other parts also, there are Azad Maidan riots in Mumbai, rumor mourning via sinister SMSs triggering the exodus of Northeast India. So what do you see my friends, uh, how social media even in this case have been affecting the people. So basically as I told you, Assam, there are many other factions who want their own statehood within the constitution of India. Okay. So first such some of the states are Bodoland, Kirby Anglong, Daima Raj, Kamatpur are four uh, different demands or four statehood demands which are happening in Assam. So why they are demanding for statehood? So you see my friends, uh, the three regions which I have provided here, the three statehood regions, uh, they are provided autonomous district councils, autonomous district councils uh, under Schedule 6. Schedule 6 of the constitution. We have Bodoland Territorial Court, uh, Council, BTC. We have Kirby Anglong region. Okay. We have even for Daimabad included with another, uh, the other parts. Uh, we have another, the third uh, uh, the third uh, 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 autonomous district council has scheduled six areas, but still they want a uh, different uh, or separate statehood. To suppress that, though we have given this schedule six status, eventually we know that. So basic reasons for them to ask uh, the statehood was change in demography which was happening very fast in that region. Okay, to protect their own culture, language and ethnicity, ethnicity identity. Uh, for rapid development, uh, because they are all backward district, to ensure control over the natural resources are few of the points which you need to note down. The first I would like to discuss the Bodo territory. Okay, The Bodoland uh, territorial agreement was recently happened in the year 2020. A new Bodoland Territorial Autonomous Council was also formed at that time. This was the third, third agreement. Agreement with Bodo people which central government has signed. Okay. So, Bodo land state demand. Bodo land or Bodo demand is a demand by ethnic group who are called Bodos. State consisting of areas located in extreme north of northern bank of Brahmaputra river in the state of Assam by the foothills of Bhutan and Anachal Pradesh inhabited predominantly by Bodo people. The Bodo land movement for independent state of Bodo land, it started in the year 1987 under the leadership of Upendranath Brahma of All Bodo Student Union. 
Upendranath Brahma, who belonged to all Bodo Student Union, started the demand for Bodo land. You can observe, my friend, most of the movements which take place in Assam and Northeast India, some most of the times, are driven by the student unions. When you see where exactly does this Bodo land or Bodo territorial area lies, is with these four districts. These four districts that are in northern part of Assam. Okay, these four districts include. Kokarjar, Chirang, Baksa, and Udalguri. Okay, these are the four districts which are included in Bodo Land Territorial Area Districts. So Bodo Land Territorial, so Bodo Land Territorial Council was formed with uh, has a legislative, administrative, and executive financial powers of over 40 policy areas in Bodo Land Territorial Districts. That are these four districts. It was formed in the year 2003. Following a peace agreement, this was second peace agreement, my friends, for your kind information, between the government of India and Bodo rebels and is functioning since 2003 under the provisions of 6th schedule of the constitution of India, which provide for autonomous district council. But this did not satisfy the Bodo people, my friends. Even after the Bodo accord, there were even clashes within the Bodo, with the Bodos and other people, with the Bodos and Muslims in the region. And even the, the National Democratic Front of Bodo land have fired arms, used arms against the Assam police forces during the, this time. So why exactly? Even after a peace agreement, even after forming Bodo Territorial Council in the 2300 Schedule 6, why was this happening? Because first thing, uh, uh, the political empowerment of the minority communities in Bodo Territorial areas in recent years has resulted in growing unease among the Bodo community. They thought the Muslims are growing faster than us. How this is possible? It is only possible when there is an injustice existing in the system. So then they attacked Muslims. The fear of about non-Bodo communities dominating the political process has also caused fear. But my friends, in reality, when the Bodo Territorial Council has around 46 seats, okay, in 46 seats, six are reserved for governor, okay, governor, okay, 30 are for scheduled tribes, 30 are for scheduled tribes, five are for minorities okay and rest of the five are for others whoever they want to do okay with such a small minority group within the Bodo Territorial Council how come they say but you see even with a five number the Muslims in the region uh, have showed their uh, dominance sometime and it has led to further clashes in the Bodo Territorial area Okay. Second, the political tension in the area is further compounded by perception among Bodos that illegal migration of Bangladeshis is relating them to the major minority status in their own land. That is, Bodos are becoming minorities. Third, the perception of massive illegal migrants, migrants have generated a fear of psychosis in the Bodo community that their ancestral land, that their land will be taken away by these non-Bodos in the region. The lack of any reliable data on the number of people migrating from the Bangladesh into Assam, further, this further aggravated the situation. The fourth, uh, fourth reason why this insurgency again started or attacks again started was the inclusion of illegal migrants in the voter list. Voter list is viewed to be deliberate ploy to empower an outside group vis-a-vis -vis the borders so that the later lose their distinct indigenous identity. This has created a singe mentality among the Bodos. So, failure of BTC. As I told you, the Bodo Territorial Council, which had its own economy, its own educational, as I told you, around 40 subjects it was dealing with. Even it was having powers to deal with uh, re related to Panchayatra system. Despite all these provisions, Bodos continue to feel insecure vis-a-vis -vis the minority communities due to weak administrative institutions that have failed to lock their rights. The dis divisive politics of members of BTC have also added to the insecurity. So, in within the BTC also, they were in groupings. Okay. 
So the BTG has failed to assure the fears of non-voters too. So what happened? As I told you, the structure of BTC with 46 seats in total, 30 reserved for scheduled tribes, 5 for non-tribals, 5 open to all communities and remaining 6 with nominated. This council, where the policy decision in terms of development packages, lands and business tax, soon, and as I told you, even they deal with Panchayat Raj. Panchayat Raj did not solve their issues, sir. Well, the Bodo Accord explicitly states that non-tribal population will not be disadvantaged by the provisions of Accord. In reality, their rights are not duly acknowledged by BTC, creating enormous tension. The non-tribal people or Muslim minorities say that, you said our rights will not be dissolved because we are also living in this area from long time. You can't put some other person or tribals into majority here and leave us like that. So they said, they thought tribals are now growing, we are not growing as equal to them. So now the fight started again. The final cause of recurring violence in the existence of armed groups like uh, National, Bodo, uh, National Democratic Front of Bodoland, the Bitsa Command Force, uh, the representing the Shantals, etc., which have capability to challenge the authority of the state administration. So because of these armed groups, the Bodo issue has never died. So to end this process, to end this whole thing, the government of India has again took up the talks and it has made a Bodo Accord. As I told you, there are two Bodo Accords. First one was happened in the year uh, 1993 with the All, All Bodo Students Union. Okay, then uh, leading to the creation of Bodoland Autonomous Council, which was later ha given the status of Schedule 6 by the second Bodo Accord. The recent Bodo Accord, Friends, I am saying you, if you are not following my speed, please pass the video and write down the important points in the slide. And the year, in the year 2020, we have signed another, another agreement which created Bodo Land Territorial Region. That is nothing but, here what we did a special thing, that Bodo Land Territorial Council has powers even to deal with Bodos outside these four districts. Outside these four districts where Bodos are in majority. Signed agreement in 2020, it renamed as Bodo Land Territorial Area District. Okay. Next, it promised now legislative, executive and administrative autonomy under 6th schedule to Bodo Land Territorial Council and expansion of BTC territory in lieu to statehood. It provides for alteration of area of BTAD, that is, uh, it, it want to expand beyond the four districts and provision outside uh, BTAD. BTR, that is, Bodo Land Territorial Region, includes the villages which are dominated by Bodos but, but are outside the Bodo Territorial area presently. That is, the villages where Bodos are in majority but outside the Bodo Land Territorial area districts then they will also be included. So, what is the way out? What is the solution for this Bodos? You know, my friends, even in this 2020 agreement, even the government of India has accepted few other uh, issues also, where Bodos have been consistently pushing to make Bodo to be included in the Yaith schedule, languages, okay? Even they have also said they will also look into protection of their uh, uh, cultural identities, even for the provision of uh, larger package, all this were also discussed. Apart from that, where do you see the solution to the Bodo issue? Where do we see the solution to the Bodo issue? The solution to the Bodo issue lies with a very easy process. That is, first digitalize the land records. Digitalization of land records. Make good land survey. Okay, that would reduce uh, the tension among the tribals and non-tribals that their land will be taken away. Okay, that will be one issue. The state and union government need to work together to collect credible data to flow the migrants into the areas that has been included in the Bodo Territorial Area districts. That is by implementing National Registry of Citizens under the guidance of Supreme Court is also one of the solution which is available for Bodo land. Okay, and that NRC should also be what you say, the data from NRC should be used to make separate list for even Bodo land so that all the illegal immigrants can be moved out. 
improve the presence of both state and civil administration and law enforcement agencies in the areas that are identified as highly susceptible to ethnic violence. Next important region, my friends, the next issue where the statehood issue have raised in, uh, in the case of uh, uh, Assam is Kirby Anglong region. You can see these are two Kirby Anglong districts, my friends. They are separated by another small district in here. See here, you can see they are separated by another small district. This is called West Kirby Anglong and this is called East Kirby Anglong region. These are dominated by Kirby uh, Autonomous Hill Districts in Assam in Mikri Hills. Okay, Separate state of Kirby Anglong, a homeland for Kirby tribe. The Kirby tribe people are asking for their own homeland. Okay, Kirby Anglong district is the larger among us, the 27 districts of Assam. And you know what, my friend? This has been declared as most backward district of India, okay, in 2006 by government of India. So recently what happened, even in this Kirby Anglong region, there is a lot of insurgency going on. They have their own armored, armored group or insurgency groups developing in this Kirby Anglong because they are having different identity and they live in hilly areas that are nothing but Mikri Hills. So what happened, the government of India has even made a peace agreement with Kirby Anglong insurgent groups. So according to the Kirby Anglong peace agreement, which recently happened in the year 2021, by the time I am telling this class, which is in the February 2022, this agreement was already signed. Okay, This Kirby, large number of Kirby outfits or insurgent groups have surrendered their arms under this accord. So let's see. What are the important provisions which are present in this accord? Now you see five militant organizations that are KL, KLNLF and PDCK, UPLA, KPLT and KLF. Not necessary you need to know their names. Okay. And more than thousand of their armored cadres have given up violence and joined the mainstream of society. Under this Kirby and Long Peace Accord, my friends, what happened was they were given special development package in which the central government and state government have proclaimed that both they will provide around 1000 crores of package in a span of five years so that the region is developed, you see, will be allocated over five years by central and Assam government to take up special projects for development of Kirby areas. They will provide more autonomy to Kirby Anglong AC that agreement will transfer much of the autonomy as possible in exercising the rights. That is Astronomous District Council, my friend. Kirby Anglong Autonomous District Council, which is on the sixth schedule. The government has said will provide more of autonomy to this. Overall, the present agreement proposes to give more legislative, executive and administrative and even financial powers to Kirby Anglong Autonomous District Council. Apart from that, they even provided rehabilitation packages to all the armed insurgents who have surrendered their arms in the agreement to rehabilitate the cadres of armed groups, development of local people. The government of Assam will even said that they will uh, set up a Kirby Welfare Council to focus on development of Kirby people living outside the Kirby Anglong Autonomous Districts. Okay, even some people will be living beyond that, no? Even for their development. They even said they will look into uh, uh, providing a scheduled yacht status to the Kirby language, protection of culture, identity and language of Kirby people all around development of re region. And the consolidated fund of the state will be amended to meet the resources of Kirby Anglong Autonomous District Council. Okay, So even from, uh, from the consolidated fund of state, they can take the money to meet their demands. The next important issue or important statehood uh, issue which is within the Assam is Daima Raj which has been demanded by the Daima group or Daima community. Daima Sa Dimsa, okay, if I am pronouncing wrong, I am sorry, Dimsa, Dima or Daima or Dimsa, demanding a separate state called Dima, Dima Raj or Daima Raj 
or Dima land comprising the Dima inhabitant areas which include Dima Hamso districts and parts of uh, Kacha districts. So, this is the Dima Raj what they are expecting you see. Such a long area, such a large area, which even includes the Karbi Anglong, southern parts, uh, Dima district, northern Kachar districts uh, and all those. Parts of Kachar district, where northern Kachar district is also a schedule 6 area, my friend. Okay, parts of uh, Naugan district and Karbi Anglong district uh, in Assam together with the part of Daimapur in Nagaland. So, together with the parts of Daimapur, here, here some parts of Daimapur. They are asking that we want a Daimabad or Daima land or Daima Raj, which we have our own statehood. So, the government has created the Daima, Daima Hasavo Autonomous District Council. This is also under the Schedule 6, my friend, okay, to resolve their demands. So, the next statehood demand uh, which I want to discuss is, this is a very unique statehood demand which you might have not heard in the recent times, that is a demand for Kamtapur, okay. They do not have any autonomous council, the Kamta people do not have any autonomous council. Demand for the state in North West Bengal and Assam by Coach Raj Bansis or Raj Bongsis people some of the districts of West Bengal plus districts of Assam. So, this state Kamtapur are the people from Raj Bogis tribes people who want a separate uh, state for themselves which includes the areas of see this is the northern, northern Bengal and these are the northern districts of Assam all these areas they want and they want to form a separate state which is called Kamtapur. The areas demanded under the Kamtapur also overlap with the demand of another statehood issue which is in the West Bengal state that is Gorkha land. That is Gorkha land. You see this is Gorkha land, the northern part of uh, Darjeeling issue, Darjeeling area. So, Gorkha land was another issue my friends where Gorkhas are uh, different ethnic people who have their own uh, ethnic identity and their own language. Mostly they speak Nepal. So, what happened when Bangladesh government has declared that Bengali will be the only language for communication, then they raised and they demanded for a separate statehood that is nothing but Gorkha land. So, when Kamtapur issue has come out, that Kamtapur people even claim the areas which are dominated by Gorkhas. These two maps you can compare my friends, these two maps. You can see some of the areas of Gorkha land. So, these areas, see Kamtapur has started from here, see here, from here. But Gorkha land also includes these areas. So, even Kamtapur is demanding for the areas of Gorkha land. And this issue is not much now, is not a burning issue. But I would like to say that this is also one of the statehood demand within the Assam. So, even Assam faces number of other challenges, especially it also faces challenges from Maoism or left-wing extremism, where most number of left-wing extremist group have made their safe havens in Assam, in the forest regions of Assam. Okay, Maoist and Maoist prevalence has been noted in Assam and border areas of Arunachal Pradesh and several Maoist leaders have even been arrested in Assam. So, my friends, I hope I would like to end my class here regarding the Assam and we here come to the end of the session of whole Northeast insurgency with specific to each and every state I have completed in my classes. And uh, to complete regarding Assam, where you can find the solution for the insurgency or issues within the Assam. The solution lies within the people of Assam, my friends, and within the government of Assam. Assam faces a very different insurgency. Apart from Ulfa, which demand for sovereign Assam or independent Assam, there are no other groups which are demanding for sovereignty from Assam or going out of Assam. They are only demanding for their separate statehood. And Schedule 6 or Autonomous District Councils, when compared to all its history, they are not the most successful institutions. So, to make the institution successful, the only solution lies uh, with education by providing infrastructure, by providing skill and employment opportunities beyond the agriculture, what is very predominant in Assam is the only way out. 
and assam it's not just the issue of insurgency it also faces problems from climate change and also problems from the china water issue where it might even damage the brahmaputra river and flooding of brahmaputra river which happens frequently as china is building more and more dams it can release water suddenly and flood assam and our most of the northeast regions so with such a peculiar challenges coming up the insurgency need to die and it is only through education i hope it is possible and by the support of state government in skilling and employment creation beyond agriculture so my friends uh, that's all for today thank you for watching my video this is nikhil from telugu one academy thank you